Greetings and welcome back to my channel. I am Ken McAuliffe, the Jazz Vinyl Audiophile. Today coming to you from New York City's Jazz Record Center, which is undoubtedly the mecca for capitalist jazz on the East Coast. Capitalism being a place where you come and buy stuff with your hard-earned American dollars. Um, I'm here every Saturday. Been here too long, time to leave. But um, I wanted to talk about Nick Phillips and I, the producer from Craft Records, discussed this box set, The Birth of Bop, the Savoy 10-inch collection. And I'm going to do a little unboxing for you here. The hype sticker says, celebrating 80 years of Savoy Records with a collection of early Bop recordings. Five 10-inch LPs cut from newly restored and remastered audio. Booklet features vintage photographs and new liner notes by Grammy-winning writer and broadcaster Neil Tester. Includes legendary artist Charlie Parker. We'll get back to him in a minute. Uh, Dexter Gordon, Stan Getz, Milt Jackson, Fats Navarro. On the back side, we have uh, Charlie Parker, Romance Without Finance, which is kind of a famous, I always associate that with uh, Central Avenue in LA, I don't know why. Um, Bud Johnson, who's kind of a, you know, I think Bud, Bud Johnson was either a tenor or a soprano or an alto player, but very soulful and even played on some records in the 60s that were really kind of modern, sort of like Coleman Hawkins. You know, Coleman Hawkins is the dean of jazz saxophone. I think he sort of invented jazz saxophone. And to me, like, there's that Coleman Hawkins record with Sonny Rollins with a couple of Coleman Hawkins on Impulse, a bunch on Prestige. He's a timeless uh, player. To me, he doesn't sound dated. To me, some people sound dated, like Lester Young, even though he's beautiful, sounds kind of dated. Anyway, Eddie Lockjaw Davis, Stealing Trash, Alan Eager, Leo Parker, Roy Porter, Serge Chaloff, Morris Lane. Who's Morris Lane? Um, the great Don Bias, another eternal saxophonist who plays so beautifully. I recently interviewed Melissa Aldana, and she cited her love for Don Bias. And when you listen to Melissa Aldana, you follow her on Instagram, she does these really, like, a blur of very fast, soft notes. And um, she's, I think she got that from Don Bias, who does the same thing, just this beautiful sound and plays like a velvet cushion, but not like Stan Getz. Um, but let's open this thing in a second. Each one is called The Birth of Bop, volume two, three, four, five, one. And it has the dates originally issued 1952 up to 1953. And you can see what the original covers looked like there. I don't know if you can see that. Is that kind of focus? Oh, it does focus, great. Let's open this puppy up. It's very exciting. If you didn't see my earlier interview with Nick Phillips from Craft Records, I suggest you set that out. Nick Phillips is doing amazing work, probably some of the most important jazz reissue work going. Easily, what he's doing is as important as what Joe Harley and Kevin Gray are doing for the uh, Chad Kassam uh, series. Beautiful packaging. Nice Savoy logo there at the bottom. Black and white, of course. Whoa, I like this. The music of the future. Wow. Bebop, the music of the future. Future. Don't let it near your children. Tad Dameron and Fats Navarro. Um, and then just a breakdown, track by track, with when it was recorded. These are beautiful liner notes. Who wrote it? Who played on it? They kick right off, man. So page after page. Um, wow. The great Don Bias. Focus, you mother. Alan Eager. Is Alan Eager British? Seems like he should be. I don't know. Um, I was thinking, because I was going to talk about Charlie Parker a little bit. There's Milt Jackson. There are certain musicians who play what I think of as perfect solos. Milt Jackson, Charlie Parker. Um, Coltrane can play perfect solos and not-so-perfect solos as he was working through his addictions. Uh, but these guys who play perfect solos are rare indeed. They make, they, make, they make a complete statement from stop to finish. It opens perfectly. It has an incredible middle. Uh, 
I mean, if you think about Wayne Shorter playing on Asia, that's a perfect solo. Steve Gadd's drum solo on Asia is a perfect solo, but more into the true jazz realm. Uh, Charlie Parker, Wayne Shorter with uh, Art Blakey. Oh, wow, look at this. Nice picture of uh, the drummer Roy Porter. I've never seen a photo of him before. It doesn't want to focus. Oh, and uh, here's the final page. Producer Teddy Reed. Let's see what this final page says. You often find important information on these final pages. Producer's notes. In an effort to meticulously replicate these Savoy 10 shell pieces as they were originally released, we have chosen to reproduce the disc labels with the original spelling errors included. For the sake of historical authenticity rather than factual accuracy, corrected, corrected information is noted in this accompanying booklet. And they have all the thanks. Lacquers cut by Daniel Crager at SST. Mastering and audio res restoration by Joe Tarantino at Joe Tarantino Mastering. Produced by Nick Phillips. Let's see what they're talking about. Oh, look at this. It even comes in cardboard sleeves. Wow. I don't think these are, very, these are really horrible for your records. But the fact that they replicated it to that degree is pretty, pretty crazy. And they replicate the original sort of maroon Savoy uh, label. That is really cool. And these feel nice. They're super clean. I used to complain about Music Masters, how sometimes they, uh, they have this weird shading on their LPs. It didn't affect the sound, but it sure was weird. That is so wild. I mean... I would right away send off to like Sleeve City or something and get some really nice, those silky sort of, you know, plastic liners because this is not good for your records. But it's so cool, they replicate it exactly. On the back, all the information on each disc. That is beautiful, you know, beautiful replication. Kraft has done an incredible job with artwork on all their uh, releases, even on the kind of odd releases, like another side of John Coltrane. That was kind of an odd, like Coltrane, Coltrane as a sideman. But the artwork was beautiful on the cover. And uh, these are all really, oh, they're just different colors. But is that cool or what? Those, I think those are, wow, look at that. Those are beautiful, beautifully done. And it's, it's laminated, is it laminated? No, it's something else, but these are beautiful, uh, heavy duty jackets. Wow, beautiful job. Wow. Uh, I mean, to me, you know, Nick made the point um, that these are not limited edition per se, but he says with these box sets that are more expensive to press and require more work, they essentially are sort of limited editions. And to me, this is a great uh, introduction to jazz. I mean, my first record I ever bought was uh, Miles Davis' Basic Miles. Then I bought Nefertiti. But then I went back to Bebop because I thought, I mean, I was... In, a drummer then and I was playing in uh jam sessions where you played bebop standards you played Charlie Parker tunes and and uh all the stuff out of what was known as the real book to really learn jazz and to learn form and learn how to solo I was certainly just learning um but it got me to thinking when he said you know we, we put out these box sets but they're really limited editions and I know there was a Charlie Parker 10 inch Savoy collection uh which I wanted to get which came into the store but I didn't and so that is a really collectible thing. And not that you should get something just because it's collectible, but uh, you're buying a piece of musical history. And it made me think about, I came here at the store looking for that Charlie Parker box that we didn't have. And it made me realize, well, I've realized it before, but Charlie Parker is a really essential part of the jazz canon. He's sort of, a, he's really the foundation. Bebop is the foundation to me of, um, of contemporary jazz. And, to not go back and check out Dizzy and Bird, but for me, especially Bird, you're really cheating yourself because Charlie Parker is like the sunlight, you know, piling through a window. You know, I think they should play children Charlie Parker records every day, first thing in the morning, over kindergarten, over there milk and cookies and orange juice, if they still do that. And Charlie Parker records, like here at the store, are plentiful. We have this many, we have a lot of Charlie Parker records because people don't really, when they come to the store, if they're newbies, they want to buy Bill Evans, I understand. Miles Davis, I understand that. Um, but if you really want to go back, 
to the foundations of contemporary jazz, you got to get into bebop. Plus, it's incredibly fun music. You know, originally the guys played bebop so the white guys from the swing bands couldn't hang because they couldn't play that stuff. I believe I'm correct in saying that. Um, and if you grew up a white, a, a black player in America, jazz, even though it was their music, you know, this is this was, is, however you want to look at it, an incredibly racist country. And these incredible geniuses that do not get the respect they deserve in our disaster capitalism society, where all that matters is a buck, these guys are overlooked. Um, and it's, it's horrific. You know, they appreciate jazz much more in Europe and in Japan than they do here. But anyway, I thought I'd run through some of these Charlie Parker albums, which here at the store are cheap. And wherever you find them, they should be relatively cheap because... There's a lot of them, you know, but Bird is, you know, Bird played, his name was AKA Bird, played perfect solos. He had incredible, flawless technique. When you see him play, he didn't move. He just stood there and man, did he sound, that Bird sound is just, the solos just come flying out and they're just glorious, no matter what the setting. Um, so this is Bird at St. Nick's. This was recently reissued. This is an original OJC, an original OJC. Is that an oxymoron? Charlie Parker, Al Haig, Roy Haynes, Red Rodney, Tommy Potter. Killer lineup. And they cover uh, Ornithology, Embraceable You. I cover The Waterfront, Birds, Scrapper from the Apple, Confirmation. This is a wonderful record, man. Every, every jazz fan should have some Charlie Parker in your collection. You're not a jazz fan if you don't have Charlie Parker records. Bird on 52nd Street. Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, Duke Jordan, Tommy Potter, Max Roach. This is just like sunlight. To me, this is such happy, upbeat, life-affirming, life-embracing music. And it swings so hard. And it's the basis for everything that came after it. The Happy Bird, sealed, 25 bucks on Charlie Parker Records. There's the Happy Bird. Will you please focus? Anyway, um... Charlie Parker in Sweden. I love this. Manufactured and distributed in Britain by Transatlantic Records, 72 Heath Street, London, NW3. Ornithology, Scrapper from the Apple, Cool Eyes, Star Eyes, Body and Soul, How High the Moon. Uh, this is a, these are, these are cool, this label, extra. That's cool artwork. Can we get this thing to frickin' Isn't that cool artwork on those labels? Um, Bird in Paris. Bird, Sidney Bechet, who was a superstar. Sidney Bechet was the uh, Billie Eilish of jazz in France, I think in the early 50s. And look at Parker. Handsome dude. Park, uh, Bird with Max Roach. Bichet. I don't know who those guys are. Uh, this is one of those tracks. It's interesting. On, on these old records, you'll find multiple versions of the same tracks. So you can hear all the different solos. Newly Discovered Side by Charlie Parker. The Immortal. Enhanced Stereo on Savoy. $15. What label is this? Not an original pressing. Mastering Medallion Studios, the album cover by Harvey. Got to put a female on the cover. This will sell the album. Pensive Bird. So are you saying that when Bird, this is another Ember Records from the UK. Kind of looks like any number of uh, Nina Simone records. The Jazz Cool, Charlie Parker. Never, re never previously released. Move, White Christmas, Ornithology, Hot House, Grooving High, Theme, Cool Blues, Ornithology, Round Midnight, Coco. With some wise information here below. Editing of the tape master was only done where the acetates were ruined or where solos were drowned out by party noises. Scratches, clicks, pops, and other noises were edited out to the most practical degree. Editing, mastering, and pressing have been done with the best technical facilities money can buy. This has resulted in a record that sounds infinitely better than the original source of this sound. Now, this is what today's modern remasterers would tell you. We took it from the original tape. It sounds better than it ever previously sounded. 
So that sort of language has been in jazz since the 50s. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update talking about the birth of Bob and Charlie Parker. Uh, this is not out yet, I believe, but I'm really excited to have this. I will uh, <clears throat> do another interview on the sound quality, not an interview, an overview. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.